Hi everyone, in this video we will look at extensions which are a new feature that was recently added to the Dart language. As part of this we will see how to enable extensions inside an existing Flutter project, we will learn what extensions are and where they can be used to improve our code, and also I will try to point out where they should not be used, because as they say, with great power comes great responsibility, and Dart extensions are one language feature that should be used sensibly. And if you're new here, please like and subscribe for more Flutter videos. Alright, so let's get started and see how we can enable extensions in our Flutter project. And at the time of recording this video, extensions are available on the Flutter dev branch, which already includes support for Dart 2.6. So you need to be running on Flutter dev, otherwise what I'm about to show you will not work. So given a new or an existing Flutter project, we can enable extensions by performing two steps. The first one is to go to the pubspec.yaml file, and here we need to update the Dart SDK to a minimum version of 2.6.0. Next, we can open the analysisoptions.yaml file, and inside the analyzer section, we need to add these two lines. Enable experiment, and inside it, extension methods. And by the way, if you don't have an analysisoptions.yaml file, you can grab this from the root folder of the Flutter SDK and copy it into your project. Okay, so assuming that you're running on Flutter dev and you have performed these two steps, you should be able to get the latest packages and Dart extensions will be enabled for your project. And just to be clear, once Dart 2.6 lands on the Flutter stable branch, the only step that you'll need to do is to update the Dart SDK to 2.6. Ok, so we are now ready to dive in and learn about extensions, and to start off I'm going to open a Dart pad instance, and let's suppose that we are writing a program to convert temperature values from Celsius to Fahrenheit, so we could use a double to represent a temperature value, and the first thing that we are going to do is to define an extension on double with this syntax, and then we could add some methods to convert degrees from Celsius to Fahrenheit and vice versa by using these formulas. And notice how I'm using the this keyword over here to refer to the current value. And once I had this, I could define a double value representing a temperature of 10 degrees Celsius, like this. And if I wanted, I could get the corresponding temperature in Fahrenheit by typing this line. And I could also add a print line to show the temperature both with Celsius and Fahrenheit. And if I run this code, I can see that the values are printed over here. Ok, so the first takeaway here is that we can use extensions to add new functionality to existing types, and we do that by defining an extension with this syntax, and inside the extension body we can add new methods or even computed variables with getters and setters if we want to. However, do keep in mind that we are not allowed to add instance variables inside extensions. In other words, you can think of extensions as a way to extend the functionality of your types, but not the underlying data. By the way, at the beginning of this video, I said that we should be mindful when we use extensions, and there are cases where it's best not to use them. And this example that I've just presented is one such case, because with this extension, nothing stops me from writing code like this, and convert my temperature to Fahrenheit more than once. And this syntax doesn't make sense. So if you are designing an API to work with temperatures, extensions are not a good fit and you should define a completely different type instead. So in this specific case, we would be much better off creating a temperature class and internally we could represent temperature values using Celsius and this class would also offer a getter to get the Fahrenheit value. And then we could add some factory constructors to make our API nicer so that in the main method we can create temperature values like this. And I feel that using a bespoke type for temperature would leverage the type system, make our code much easier to understand, and avoid overloading generic numeric types such as double with domain specific logic for temperature conversion. Ok, so let's get back on track and my initial goal was to introduce extensions. And as a next step, I want to talk about generics and how we can use them with extensions. So our next goal is to write an extension that would allow us to write code like this, and we could use this to compute the sum of all the elements inside a collection of int or double values. And to do this, I can write an extension on iterable of type t. 
and then I can give a name to this extension by calling it iterable num x, where x stands for extension. And I'm going to say that this extension operates on any type t that extends num, which is a type that represents a number in Dart. So this extension will work both with collections of type int and double. And then I can define a sum method with a return type of t. And then I can implement the method body like this. So what this method does is to initialize sum to either integer 0 or double 0 depending on the type of t. And then it calculates the sum by iterating through the values of this, which is the iterable object itself, and adding each non-null value to sum and returning the result at the end. And now that we have this extension, we can express the sum of all the elements in our collection like this. All right, so we are now a bit more familiar with extensions and we have seen that extensions can be named or unnamed and also that they can work with generics. So let's see in which other ways we could use them. And to do that, I'm going to head over to Visual Studio Code because the next thing that I want to show you is how to use extensions to extend existing Flutter types and reduce boilerplate code for common layout tasks. For example, here we have a column layout which defines some text widgets and a custom button widget and it looks like this on the simulator. Now, if we wanted, we could add some padding to all these widgets like this. And if we hot reload now, we can see that the padding is applied. And in this specific layout, the most important elements are the column and the text widgets and the button as well. And I kind of feel that these padding widgets add too much noise and make our code less readable. So to overcome that, we can define an extension of the widget class. So this is an extension called widget padding x and it defines a method that returns a widget. And what this does is to take the current widget and add a padding as a parent and return it. And the benefit of this is that we could simplify our previous layout. So we can go back to this and here we can express the padding this way. So this accomplishes the same result but I think we can all agree that this is much more readable. And by the way, I want to mention that I borrowed this specific example from this blog post by QuickBird Studios. So the credit for this example goes entirely to them. Okay, so let's get back to Visual Studio Code because I want to point out one thing. And that is that this extension on widget that I created here has its own name. And this is something that we always need to do if we want to import and use extensions from different files. In other words, if I remove the name from here, then the code in this file will not compile because the extension does not have a name and this method cannot be resolved by the compiler. So in general, it's always a good idea to define extensions with names if they are to be used publicly. Next, I want to show you how to use extensions with static methods. And in Flutter, there is one API that I always forget how to use correctly. And that is the shape border class that we can use to define various shapes. So over here, I have an example of a custom button class that uses a rounded rectangle border to define the shape that we want. And since I find this API quite difficult to remember, I could define an extension on shape border. And I could call this shape border X and inside it I could add a static method called rounded rectangle which in turn would return this code. And then every time I need a rounded rectangle shape I could call this in just one line and I feel that this is easier to remember. Next, let's look at another application of extensions. And oftentimes in my code I need to create a widget class that has a parent block or change notifier. For example, over here I have one implementation of the Flutter counter example using change notifier provider along with a value notifier. And in order to use this counter page correctly, I need to create it like this. And up until now, I had been implementing this kind of thing by using a static create method, which does the right thing for me. So that at the calling side, I can just write counter page dot create with context and this shows the page over here. However, if we wanted, we could argue that the counter page class is already complete as it is, and this is just an additive helper method. And if we wanted better separation of concerns, we could move this into an extension like this, 
and we could name this counter page x for extension and then in our main file we could create it like this. And in general I feel that extensions might be a good place to hold static helper methods for existing classes because they let us more clearly separate all the main functionality inside our classes from any class specific helpers that we might need. And now that we have seen all these examples, you may think that extensions are the next big thing and want to use them everywhere. Well, not so fast. And I want you to keep in mind that just because you can use extensions, it doesn't mean that you should use them everywhere. Ultimately, you should aim for your code to be understandable and easy to navigate. And if you overuse extensions, they can quickly become a dumping ground for helper methods that you don't know where else to put. So I encourage you to only use them where it makes sense. And a good criteria when designing APIs based on extensions is to ask yourself if your changes will lead to a better API. And a desirable trait of a good API is that it should be hard to use incorrectly. And our first example where we were working with temperatures should come to mind. And while there are many things that extensions can do, there are also other things that extensions cannot do, or at least not currently. And things that we cannot do include adding constructors to extensions, whether they are factory constructors or not, and extending interfaces or methods from base classes. Okay, so in this video we have learned about extensions and we have seen that we can use them to extend most types in Dart or Flutter. And by the way, I want to point out that there is a project called Dart X, which adds a lot of useful extension methods to the types in the Dart language. And this includes additional functionality to work with iterable and strings and time utilities as well, so that you can write code like this and many other things as well. So I encourage you to get familiar with this package and feel free to include it in your own projects. And also I discovered another project called Styled Widget, which was made as an experiment showing how widget styling APIs could be improved using a syntax that is similar to the Swift UI framework by Apple. And in the readme, we can find examples showing how to style text and icon widgets in a way that is more readable than the standard Flutter APIs. And the way this works under the hood is to use extensions together with copy with as a way to modify an existing widget and replacing it with a new copy that has some different properties. By the way, at the time of recording this video, this package is still an experiment which is subject to breaking changes and is not ready for production use. And this may or may not change in the future. In any case, it would be interesting to see if the Flutter team will lead the way and improve some widget APIs to use extensions in the future. Okay, so we reached the end of this tutorial. And by the way, if you find some cool new ways of using extensions in your own projects, let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.